Hey Rebel EM followers, I want to talk about a paper that just came out uh, just this month actually, February of 2024, on the use of norepinephrine through peripheral IV. Now, to get us started and set a baseline, the Surviving Sepsis campaign came out with their list of recommendations back in 2021. And in that recommendation or set of guidelines, they say start vasopressors peripherally rather than delaying infusion until central venous catheter is placed. They gave it a weak recommendation, very low quality evidence. The paper we're going to be talking about is this one, Peripheral Administration of Norepinephrine, a Prospective Observational Study, published in CHEST, as I said, February of this month, and I have the PubMed ID number for you if you want to pull the paper for yourself. I will also make a blog post of this video on the Rebel EM website with all the details of the study. So what they did was a prospective observational study in a single medical ICU at the Cleveland Clinic. And they set up this protocol um, for all patients coming to this ICU that were going to get norepinephrine run through a peripheral IV. And that protocol was this list of things. A 20 to 22 gauge IV above the wrist but below the antecubital fossa. Ultrasound guided peripheral IV both making sure that the catheter was in the lumen after placement and then also flushing with saline and making sure that there was a flush within the vessel. The norepinephrine concentration they used was 16 milligrams and 250 mLs of D5W. The max dose that they would run through the peripheral IV was 15 micrograms per minute. And then they were assessing these IVs every two hours with both blood aspiration and making sure that it flushed with no problem. Now I want to talk about their concentration because they did 16 milligrams and 250 mLs. And really there's all kinds of concentrations we can make when it comes to norepinephrine. It can come in 4, 8, or 16 milligrams and you can mix that in 250, 500, or 1,000 mLs. At my institution where we do peripheral IV uh, norepinephrine, it is 4 milligrams and 250 mLs. So they were using quad strength norepinephrine in this study through a peripheral IV. Is not what we're doing in my practice or at the shop that I work at. The population of patients that they included were 635 patients receiving peripheral IV norepinephrine. 130 of those patients, or 20%, received peripheral IV norepinephrine for greater than or equal to 24 hours. And if we look at the infusion duration, it was about 5.8 hours in this study, which ranged anywhere from 2 to 19.7 hours. Now, what was interesting is they did a ton of education with their nursing and with their staff and their physicians. And despite all that education, 355 patients or just over 50% failed to meet at least one component of the protocol at some point during the time of the study. And so what were those things? Well, they used the right catheter size and just over 80%. The catheter location was correct in just about two thirds of patients. They used ultrasound confirmation in just under 50% of patients. And then being under that 15 micrograms per minute dose was only in about 84% of the patients. Now their primary outcome was median central venous catheter days avoided. And what they found is, is by following this protocol, one day was avoided per patient of central venous catheter, which ranged anywhere from zero to two days. Another way of saying this is, just over half the patients actually never required a central venous catheter. Extravasation events was their primary safety outcome. 35 patients had this happen, 5.5%. 60% or just under two-thirds of the events caused minimal or no tissue injury, and zero patients ended up requiring any type of surgical intervention. Now, they did a couple of post hoc analyses, and they looked at infusions that ran for less than or equal to 24 hours or versus infusions that ran over 24 hours. And as you can see, the infusion duration was shorter in the less than 24 hours compared to the greater than 24 hours. No surprise there. The max dose, the average max dose that they used was 10 micrograms per minute, regardless of how long the infusion ran for. Extravasation events occurred more commonly from a numeric standpoint in the less than 24 hour group compared to the greater than 24 hour group. And you can see that even though the percentage was higher in the over 24 hours, 
based on their extravasation incidence, which was much, much higher in the less than 24 hours than the greater than 24 hours. Another way of saying that is that just because the infusions ran for over 24 hours didn't mean that they were getting more extravasation events than those that got it for the less than 24 hours. The second post hoc analysis they did was on extravasation versus no extravasation. And what they found is the ones that had no extravasation were a little bit younger than the ones that had extravasation. They had a slightly higher BMI, although not statistically significant. The infusion duration was interestingly shorter uh, in the no extravasation group compared to the extravasation group. So the second post hoc analysis they did was extravasation versus no extravasation. And what they found is the no extravasation group, which is the middle column, what the patients were a little bit younger by four years. So no extravasation versus extravasation. They were a little bit older. The BMI was slightly higher, but not of any clinically meaningful uh, difference, 28.3 versus 27. The infusion duration was shorter in the no extravasation versus extravasation. That's not a surprise, I think, to any of us. And the catheter criteria met, in other words, they followed the protocol, was actually less in the no extravasation than the extravasation group, 44.3% versus 54.3%. Now, there's a lot of components to the bundle, but the key components for me were the use of ultrasound to ensure that the IV was placed appropriately and in the right place. They did routine peripheral IV assessments, including aspiration of the IV and looking for blood return every two hours. They limited the maximum dose of their norepinephrine to 15 micrograms per minute, and then they had an extravasation bundle that they followed that was as soon as they realized that there was an extravasation event, they ended up using fentolamine or terbutaline along with nitroglycerin paste. Now, I'm going to tell you my extravasation bundle. I have this on the Reveille M website. But what I do is once we realize there's an extravasation occurring, we stop the infusion, we switch to a different peripheral IV. The one that extravasated, we leave that peripheral IV in place. We suck out as much of the extravasated med as we can from the catheter. The next thing we do is we use either fentolamine or terbutaline, whichever you have available. And the way you make this is your fentolamine is five milligrams in one ML. You take two of those and you mix it with eight mLs of NS for a max of 10 milligrams of fentolamine. You inject five mLs through the catheter and you inject the other five ml subcutaneously into the tissue where the extravasation occurred. And then you can redose this maybe right around a one hour mark. Nobody really knows what the appropriate time to redose, but if you do need to redose, it's usually about one hour. For terbutaline, it's one milligram in an ml, and you mix that in nine mls of NS. You inject five mls through the catheter, much like you did with fentolamine. And then you inject the other five mLs subcutaneously in the tissue where the extravasation occurred. And then you can redose this every 15 minutes as needed. Now, once you've done those things, the next set of things that we also do are we use nitroglycerin paste. We put one inch to an affected area and we can redose this every eight hours as needed. We elevate the arm where the extravasation occurred. And then we use warm compresses, but be very, very careful to not burn the skin. So, Peripheral IV vasopressors. There are some key components in this study, and I keep seeing this repeated over and over and over again in every study that comes out. Make sure that your peripheral IV is a good one. I think using ultrasound is a smart way to go with that. You want to make sure that you're having routine IV assessment. In this study, they did every two hours. I actually recommend for going for every one hour or less because it limits the amount of presser that extravasates and the amount of volume that extravasates. Limit the maximum dose of your norepinephrine. Interestingly, in this study, they had 16 milligrams of norepinephrine and 250 mLs, and the max that they would get to is 15 micrograms per minute. At my institution, we do four milligrams of norepinephrine in uh, 250 mLs uh, to kind of limit that concentration of the norepinephrine. And then you definitely, 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 if you are running pressors through a peripheral IV, need to have an extravasation bundle, which I already went over what I do at my shop. So there you go. Another study on peripheral norepinephrine. I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, and questions. Thank you as always for tuning in and until next time.